Welcome to the Working Genius Podcast, where we discuss anything and everything related to the six types of working genius and how it impacts your work and your life. I'm Pat Lynchoni. I'm your host today, joined by Cody Thompson, my co-host. Hello, Cody. Hey, Pat. And joined by Tracy Noble. How are you doing, Tracy? Hey there. I'm great today. And our engineer, Matt. Cody, what are we going to talk about today? Pat, I was I was waiting for you to ask me how I am. This is the only time I was prepared for oh. an answer. <laughs> Cody, was, how are you? I'm feeling a little ridiculous right now because I'm talking <laughs> into a lapel microphone that's clipped onto the edge of a tripod because I had a whole mic fiasco. So it looks like Matt's calling me ogre hands. I've got these this very tiny <laughs> microphone. Anyway, <laughs> the one time I was prepared and you skipped it, so I couldn't go right into the topic, and we had to we had to get that in there. So what we're talking about today is. The topic is widget your progress. That's right. Widget, widget being a verb here. Use widget to evaluate your progress. So that's the thing here. So if you're not familiar with the table group and what we do with organizations, and many of you are, but we have a meeting model where we sit down with the team when they have their weekly tactical meetings and we review, you know, like, okay, so they have a big, what we call a thematic goal or a rallying cry. And then under that, they have, okay, here's the four or five things we need to do, our defining objectives to get those done. And so we sit down at meetings, and in the first five minutes, we'll say, let's put a color on all of those things. So the first thing we have to do to make this work, how is that going? And people will talk for a minute, and they'll say, I think that's green, which of course means it's going really well. And the next item, they'll say, how are we doing on this area? And somebody will say, oh, we're way behind on that. That's not good at all. Okay, that one's red. And then the next one might be yellow or orange or lime if you want to give five colors instead of three. So that's what we do in meetings. We have people use colors to evaluate their progress. And I think that's a great tool. I mean, heck, Alan Mulally, the guy who turned around the Ford Motor Company, he said that's how he went about turning around Ford. He said he would just look at every part of the company every week and say, is it green, yellow, or red? What we're saying, and this is because some of our friends at a company called The Amazing Parish, a great organization, they figured out that they could use tell us tell us what they're doing using widget cody yeah so there this is sort of a three dimensional look at that so rather than just asking hey on this defining objective is it red yellow or green they apply sort of this stage of work idea to it as it relates to wonder invention discernment galvanizing enablement and tenacity so they'll they use widget to determine to help inform not only the color, but to assess and measure the progress and figure out where is this in the stages of work? Are we still in the wonder invention stage? Do we have a plan and we're really on the enablement tenacity side, on the implementation side? So it's actually like a really comprehensive three-dimensional look at how we measure progress against our objectives. Right. And we were like, when we heard this, we thought, wow, that's, that's a whole different dimension of evaluation. And so immediately we thought, well, how would that apply to our work? Mm -hmm. And Tracy, we, you and I were talking about this today, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were talking about it within the context of the Working Genius Report. So we're in the process of updating our report, which is super exciting. We're hoping to launch that in September. And we were trying to evaluate where we are in the, prog in the process. And basically what I said to you, Pat, is... I, I actually think we're still in the ID stage. And you and were like, like, what? And I said, really? <laughs> I thought we were already in the GET stage. Yes. And, and we might have agreed that it was yellow. Exactly. But I would have thought yellow meant we just have a bunch more work to do to finish it. And you said, oh, no, Pat, you still have work to do. <laughs> That's right. And it's not a lot of work, but it's we still have a little bit of discernment to do before we get into that GET mode. And that was extremely clarifying for you because you thought you were done. Right. And th without that, without applying widget to it, I really had no idea where this fell. And now, now, then there's the Working Genius book that comes out in uh, September. That's right. We're done. We're done with the WID. And right now it's GET mode. Right. And so I'm like, okay, good, good, good. Okay. Yeah. My part of that, let me know if there's GET things to do, but since I'm not responsible for that, I need others to tell me the part that you're expecting me to lead is indeed finished. Sure. And that's really helpful. And so basically what the realization that you had in that moment where Tracy said we're still in the ID loop is, oh boy, I still am responsible and on the hook for continuing mm -hmm. to help discern and invent around that. Otherwise, you would have known, oh, there's other people that are taking it into those other stages of, of the process. And it really is 
incredibly clarifying. I, I think of it this way. Whenever we make a thematic goal, which typically has five or six defining objectives underneath it, almost always, if it's start, you know, for example, if it's like, oh, we need to come up with a new marketing strategy to, you know, whatever, it, whatever that is, almost always the first meeting around that is, is one of those ad hoc strategic meetings that we, that we talk about in your book, which is invention and discernment. We need to figure out what the strategy is and we need to argue and fight over it. And really, I think that that threshold that you guys are talking about, Pat, where you said, oh, it's it's not in the GET mode. That's, I think, where if you were to kind of overlap, I don't want to put too many models in here, but if you're to overlap the five dysfunctions, that means we're still in the conflict stage. Mm-hmm. We're like, hey, we need to argue over this a little bit more and really get it honed in before commitment is the galvanizing stage, right? Like, oh, everybody's on board. Let's go make sure all the the people are rallied around this idea because we've discerned it. It's got the stamp of approval. Now we need to get it into out of that middle activation into implementation. Cody, you were holding back on us just there, weren't you? You actually introduced an entire <laughs> new model that you didn't tell us about. I love it. And I'm I'm pissed off because one, we didn't know that. And two, that's a great application. <laughs> Sometimes I do. I wish I could tell you I thought of that before. Sometimes I start talking and then then you never know what's coming out. No, I'm just kidding. But that is really interesting because I think then accountability is often in the ET stage. Mm -hmm. Accountability and results. So, so yeah. Wow. Now how do we, where do, how do we unpack this part? I think what we're learning is this because Matt and you and I and Tracy, we were all talking that this is an art, not a science. And the whole world wants, that's what you said, Tracy, the whole world mm-hmm. wants a science for tell us exactly how we're doing. But life is messy and three-dimensional and, and, and not mutually exclusive and completely comprehensive. So you're going through a project and you sit down, like here's one, Cody and Bo and Julie are working on a product to productize working genius so the team can go out and actually do it on their own, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Well, I haven't talked to you guys about that in a while. And I said to Tracy, so how do we evaluate that? Is it green, yellow, red? Or is it at what stage in the widget process? Mm-hmm. Or is it, should I be holding them accountable for making progress? Or should we be arguing about it still? I have no idea where that falls. And yeah. if all I did is say green, yellow, or red, I would leave the meeting thinking I had very different things to do than I actually have to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Cody, where are we in that project, by the way? Well, <laughs> it's probably yellow. <laughs> And I love this because this is the uh, the really applicable part. If you're a leader and you're running a meeting and like you just asked me, so where is that product? And I say it's yellow. I think that it's about the next question. So why yes. is it yellow? Mm-hmm. Do, do you have a plan? Are you not just on track as it relates to progress, like tenacity? Or, or And so my answer to you would be, it's yellow because we've put 85% of the discernment around it to say, we think it's pretty good, but we need to reshow it to you and Tracy for a little mm-hmm. bit more discernment before we cross that conflict over into commitment and, and run the rest of the way with it. And then mm-hmm. you can galvanize like, hey, everybody, we're ready to implement this. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But if I said to you, how come you're not launching it? Or how come you're not? You'd be like, because we're not yet finished with discernment, which involves a little more conflict, a little more creativity, innovation, and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I know what I actually need to do, whereas before we would have probably all run off in different directions and frustrated each other. Well, and this is where the other part of the the meetings model in your book, Death by Meeting, is that this is where like leadership and work gets done is in the, the context of those meetings. And part of the thing that makes them interesting and compelling and actually meaningful around progress is that they we're not just there to report out. It's not there to say, hey, Cody, what is that? Yellow? Okay. Let us know when it's green. It really, we're, we're in the room to say, hey, if it's yellow, there must be a problem. Is there an amount of time or a conversation we can have to move it from yellow to lime right now? And the truth is, is it's probably a 10 minute conversation with you and mm-hmm. Tracy and, and we need to get that on the books. But if we don't ask that layer deeper question, it might remain yellow for far too long. And then it gets to frustration about like, why isn't that done yet? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't want to pick nits here, but I even think it's less than 10 minutes sometimes. Yeah. Mm. It's literally like, oh, really? You're, you'd, you'd like more input from me? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're not quite ready. Oh, okay. So, you know, and, and sometimes right in real time, we can schedule that and say, okay, once that meeting is over, it's going to be green. Yeah. 
I love you're still you're speaking my language, Pat. I've been doing this thing where when someone says, let's put a meeting on the calendar, I say, we turn we have a three minute timer, we turn it over and we say, okay, tell me in three minutes. And if if by the end of three minutes, we can't solve it, you can put that meeting on my calendar. But 80% of the time, we're in good shape after three to five minutes. It's the craziest thing. I'm amazed at how much can get done in a short period of time. If you just say, let's try. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's try, and then and then if if you can't, then by the time you go to the meeting, you're like, hey, this is this warrants a meeting. I'm glad we're going to be doing that. But we've wandered off of our topic, which is <laughs> using widget to evaluate. So in your meetings, here's what we want to do. We don't need to make this go on any longer. We need to say this as you're going through your meetings, and even if you don't do the meetings the way we do with the defining mm-hmm. objectives and all that, even if you're just saying, okay, what's everything that's going on? How is it going? You know. Make, ask the question, where does it fall in the W through T process? And what yep. does that mean about the next steps we need to move it forward? And I think it will make our meetings richer, more productive, and we are going to make progress a lot faster. Well, and I, you, like you said, Pat, I think this is just a framework for how we think about our work. It, you know, I, I was telling you guys, now Bo and I both organize the left side of our whiteboard the same way, which has a section for W. And it, we basically say like, what questions should we be asking? Or what, what are the things, the problems we're paying attention to? Then I have a, the next one is I call it baby Einstein for invention because I'm only a competency inventor. <laughs> so all my ideas are just smaller. But then we have, it, it organizes my work all the way through. So I say like, oh, these are things that still need discernment. And here are things I need to galvanize all the way through to tenacity. And it is so helpful to just know what elevation all of those things are at. And so much so that when we had a ad hoc conversation about like, should we, what other things should we sell that would might be helpful? I was like, we should sell whiteboards that have this built into it, you know, because it is just that useful to be able to categorize where, what stage of work all of your projects are in. And essentially that's what we're talking about in the meeting. Right, and we already had that, that, that podcast, I think, didn't we, where we say, whenever you're having a conversation with somebody, just say, Hey, what kind of conversation is this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are we, are we, are we wondering or are we, my wife and I lately have been just constantly saying, are we, are we galvanizing? Are we ready to move on this? Or are we eyeing still? By the way, speaking of my wife, so my 30th wedding anniversary is coming up. And so I'm going to take her back to where we went on our honeymoon. So talk about the art of working genius. So I had to W that I wanted to surprise her. I, I did, I came up with an idea. I evaluated it. I talked to a couple people about it here in the office. Then I had to go book it. Then I had to tell her about it so I could have her rediscern it if she wanted to change it a little bit. <laughs> and then once she's on board, I have to go finish all the, the ET stuff. So it's like it doesn't always go in a linear fashion. Mm-hmm. I had to do some T work before the, the, the D was finished because it was a surprise. And then I have to go do that. So it applies to every little everything we do in our lives. And I actually love that sto- story, Pat, because I think that's exactly how how it works in real in real work, obviously real life, that, that was a real life example. But when you asked about the team product, well, we did some W and I together and we did a little bit of discernment together. We went and filmed some videos to get it done. So we've been, we had to go through the tenacity piece of that to start to put it together. But then we jump back to the discernment phase and go, hey, mm-hmm. You know, what we started with isn't always, you know, the tracks aren't laid out perfectly. So let's reevaluate the last. We used to have this concept that kind of makes sense now is the first 10% and the last 10% I would ask you about. I'd be like, Pat, help us with the first 10%. You would invent. We didn't have that language around it and discern. And then when we'd get to the last 10%, I'd ask you, okay, Pat, now take a look at this. What do you think? And you'd make some tweaks. And so work doesn't happen always that linearly where once you're out of the discernment phase, you never go back there. I think very often in real life in many projects, what, right when you're finalizing some of the tenacity stuff, it's okay to lift your head up and go, okay, we're about to pound the final few nails in. Are we still mm-hmm. on the same page? And the answer might be, yeah, go for it. Or it might be, let's just tweak the dials a little bit here. It doesn't have to be reinventing the whole wheel but it can actually lead to, it, it's not always linear, not always that way. The majority of work happens that way, but, but there's a chance, a time to bounce around. Absolutely. You got to go back and re-edit and rethink things. And that's, that's, the, that's how good work happens in a messy way, as Tracy reminded us. All mm-hmm. right, that's it to today. So let's widget our progress and make sure that we're using that to evaluate where we are so we, don't our, we know what our next steps will be. Cody, thank you. We'll, we'll be looking forward to you having your big microphone in your smaller <laughs> hand <laughs> next time. 
And thanks everybody for joining us. We're, we're excited to have listeners and, and we love the feedback and we'll look forward to talking to you next time on the Working Genius Podcast. God bless. <laughs>